Jesus, 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 Jesus. Father, your name is like honey on my lips this morning. Father, you are the God that deals with our heart. And we give it back to you, Jesus. For you're the one that heals us, oh God. And Father, we are so excited to be here in the presence of God. We thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to read you something that my husband sent to some members of the congregation. He says, I can't remember if I told you, but I have moved out from Be Beggar's Alley, located at 2 Poverty Lane, at the corner of Down and Out Circle. As of today, I have a brand new home. My new address is Living Well on 231 Abundance Terrace, located at the corner of Blessings Drive and Prosperity Peak. It's in the God Can neighborhood. No longer will I allow myself to travel to the other side of town on begging Peter to pay Paul route. Located at a dead end intersection called I Don't Have, which connects with Borrower's Junction. I no longer hang out at Failure's Place near Excuses Avenue next to Procrastination Point. I've moved to an upscale community called Higher Heights with unlimited potential and opportunities for me to succeed. Care to change your address this morning? Which part of town are you in? Hallelujah. Glory to God. I don't know what about you. But when God is doing such a marvelous thing and I'm counting my blessing today and I see my grandchildren and I see my pregnant daughter that is being a child that's going to be serving God and my son-in-law worshiping God and my son that I love dearly. I don't know about you, but we have much to be thankful. Does that mean that you have arrived somewhere and God, maybe I can do this? Yes, you cannot do it, but God can through you. So worship God. Give Him the best you can this morning. Amen. Hallelujah.
You know, we're standing here in the presence of God, and I was so inspired this week because I went to see uh, Catherine Smith. And many of you maybe don't remember Catherine, but she's a beautiful woman of God, and she's stricken with a disease that is killing her brain, and she's in uh, feeding tubes. She's bedridden. She, her smile is all the way up to here. She can only communicate with a piece of sheet and like a keyboard thing, and she just point each letter to me. And I said, I'm here because I want you raised. I want this body raised from the dead. And I'm believing God that she will rise up. And I tell you, she said, I am healed by his stripe. I was healed by his stripe. That's what she was spelling to me. And I began to pray with her. It was very humbling to pray with her. A woman that could speak, but her spirit was so loud because She's crying out to God. She's loving God. These are heroes of the faith. It's not because of mother's sin or even a blind man. You know, they were asking, is that because his father sin or because they have sin in their lives? No. It's for the glory of God to be shown. And she's a testimony for Christ, even without a voice. God has given us a voice this morning to praise Him and worship Him. When you go out of these doors, you are like a dynamite, powerful, because the Spirit of the Lord is within you. Pastor Melody was following up with children that were baptized in the Holy Spirit. There was 13 of them. While we were having a revival here, the Spirit of the Lord was working over there with our children. And she couldn't let them down, and it was hard for her to keep them quiet. And you know, they were all wild, but the Spirit of God got a hold of these children. And they were gloriously baptized in fire. And they are still walking in the fire because she followed up with them. And I tell you, they're still loving Jesus. They're still spreading in the heavenly language. Parents, pour it into your kids. Teach them the power of God. Show them the power of God. People need to see, amen. Glory to God. I'm about to explode this morning. Glory to God. I just love Jesus that's all there is I just love Jesus and I know you do but walk in the fullness of your God amen you want to see miracle begin to lay hands on people and say God I believe in God amen thank you Lord father we thank you we thank you for Peggy and uh, brother Hilton Lord that have a cold right now pneumonia Jesus and we pray Lord, we send forth the word for them to be healed by the power of God. Brother Hilton is a miracle walking man, Father. And Lord, I thank you for your healing touch. I thank you for touching your people once again, Father. Lord, I thank you for this morning in Jesus' name. Amen. Go hug somebody. Go love somebody. Amen. Go to somebody you've never seen before.
Yeah, you're right. Thank you, worship team. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just going to invite uh, Brother Rob to come for the offering at this time. Are you fired up, brother? I wasn't sure if uh, the announcements were going to happen before this. Welcome. Yeah, welcome. Thank You're enjoying you. yourself? Uh, yeah. Amen. You going to come back? Yeah. Amen. <laughs> oh, praise the Lord. Oh, just recouping. Just recouping. Oh. So, I always wanted to be a worship leader. And... Uh, uh, I, I do better behind the soundboard. Uh, sorry if it was loud, but uh, that's how I like it. Please forgive me. Uh, but I, I was having this uh, thought while I was driving that uh, I, I love to worship, and, and I'd, I'd always love to be a worship leader, but I felt the Lord saying, well, Pastor asked you to do the offering. You are leading worship. And uh, that kind of hit me like a ton of bricks, because it is a reminder that as we flow from the music to the one part of the service where we, as a congregation, get to engage, we get to engage with a, with a, a tangible gift. And uh, I'm going to read from Philippians 4, and uh, it, it's not going to line up with the Philippians 4 you're going to see up there, because I'm reading from a different version. Uh, and now... I have it all, and I keep getting more. The gift you sent with Apophrodias uh, were more than enough, like a sweet-smelling sacrifice roasting on the altar. That's what your gift is. It's a sweet-smelling offering on the altar, filling the air with fragrance, pleasing God to no end. You can be sure that God will take care of everything you need. His generosity exceeding even yours in the glory that pours from Jesus, our God and Father, abounds in glory that just pours out into eternity. Yes. And as they come up, I, uh, I do visits for 100 Huntley Street, and I was visiting with a partner, and we're talking about taxes and that sort of stuff and, and she goes you know what my my accountant always shakes his head at me because he just doesn't understand and and he goes how do you do it and she just replied to me and I and that's why I'm telling you because I like to reply I just shovel it but I know that God's shovel is bigger so we thank God for his shovel and his blessings. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we're so thankful that we could gather in your house, Lord God, because it is your house. But it's not just a building, Lord God, it's a, all of us as a body of Christ. We just ask now that you take our offering and our worship towards you and bless it for the advancement of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Just want to welcome all of our visitors. I know this morning somebody, um, Betty brought this man along and he was brand new and she invited him to the church. For, uh, she was taking the city bus and he's here with us. So we welcome you. We welcome those that are here for the very first time. Where are you so we can bless you with a little something? Yay, here you are. Good. Welcome. Praise God. Now tonight it's a movie at 6 o'clock. A call Risen, popcorn and drinks for purchase. And the kids' movie also would have a uh, also. There will be baptism on Easter Sunday, and I'd like to see the list grow a little bit bigger. And if you'd like to be baptized, it's uh, oh, Easter Sunday morning, then please sign up at the front desk. Uh, it's available. Amen. Good Friday, April the 14th at 10.30 a.m. with guest speaker, uh, dear Pastor Bruce Schwint will be with us on Good Friday. He's a general of the faith, okay? And I'm, we're so excited to have him here. Sunrise breakfast. Now I'm going to need some help to do this. <laughs> Easter Sunday morning at 8 a.m. So you can sign up also maybe next week. Uh, we're going to show you a video 
Uh, but before that, the, the CD for the conference from the Saturday and the Sunday with Audrey Mack, it's available. It's uh, five CDs for $25. I know a lot of people already bought, but we'll just uh, sign up and we can have them ready for next week. And we'd like to show you the video for the conference that our young adults and our youth are going in Kingston. I tell you, this conference is going to be power pack. It's always good to go there. My husband and I, we go there even if we're older because we really enjoy it. So here's the video. experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power. Wow, isn't that powerful? I just want to acknowledge uh, Alicia Petrella. She's the one that designed the video, and she did a great job. She's so talented. We're proud of you, Alicia. Now, the deadline, the early bird fee for 155 It includes your you know, sleeping over there, your food. So 155 by April 9, just uh, sign up and go see Pastor Melody. Praise God. Amen. Oh, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We're very privileged in this church. Uh, my husband is presently in uh, Singapore. He was on a 25-hour flight, left on Saturday, and I reached this morning. So I just want to thank God. He only had an hour in uh, China to, uh, you know, to catch the next flight. So he was a little bit apprehensive. He said, you know, I don't want to miss it, otherwise you... You know, but uh, everything went well, thank God. He's meeting with a worldwide uh, church of God. It's all pastors all over the world that are gathering in Singapore. And he's meeting with leaders that, uh, you know, it's a privilege for him to be there. So just pray for him because he's involved with the uh, pastors, with the next gen, uh, you know, uh, to organize and uh, the vision of uh, the ne next generation, the new generation. Because one day we'll be gone, the older generation, you know, will we'll be gone. And the, the next one, they're going to take the baton and they're going to, you know, be forerunners. Amen? So we got to train them now. And we, they have to be appealed. You know, they have to be, um, they won't, when they come to church, they should be excited and say, you know what, I'm going to church and I have something to give even as a young person. Amen? I was saved when I was 14 years of age. And I tell you, I was totally revolutionized by God. And I'm still in revolution because God is good. And I thank him for that. So thank God. When you see a young person, just encourage them. Lift them up. They might not speak the same language than you do. And sometimes you don't always understand how they, you know, 
the way they behave or whatever, but love, love them. Amen? Go hug them. Go tell them that, you know, encourage them. Give them something, a good word, not a discouraging word. So this morning we have the privilege for Pastor Kirby to, to bring up the word and just uh, put on your seatbelt. And uh, here we go. We're taking off. Give him a hand. You all say glory together. Glory. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we give God some praise? God is good. God is good. And all the time. You know, Natalie said that she was about to explode. I am too. I was about to explode. I don't know, you know, when you come to uh, the presence of God, when you come to church, you have to come with an expectation of explosion. This is guarantee. And I come to explode. I come to change. I come to transform, to revelize myself. I don't come here to get part of them back. I come here to get stirred up by God. So I can move. I can move forward. I can, and I will expect glory. I keep repeating that to everyone. Since last Sunday, and I want to say it out loud because... I'm a testimony of God's greatness. Amen? And uh, last, last Sunday when Andre Mack was there, uh, was here with us, uh, I, I wasn't a part of the women's conference, but we had uh, um, a part of what God was doing in our weekend on Sunday morning and Sunday night. And I'm telling you, when I come here and I hear the word of God, I have to change my life. I have to transform. We cannot say to stay the same when we hear the word of God. And I can tell you something. I'm a new man since a week ago. I'm a new person. Are you not happy for me? <laughs> I'm a new man. Because the word has touched me. And what I hope is that the word can touch you again today. And, so, and next Sunday. And the next Sunday after that. Because every time we encounter the word of God, change has to come. My first message in September when I came here the first time, I said this. When someone encounters Jesus, change has to happen. Because one touch of God is enough for revival. One touch of God is enough for a change. Amen? Are you ready for the word? I'm about to expose. I don't know about you. I'm on, uh, I know since, since last Friday, I don't know what happened, but God touched us in young adults, and I'm on fire since then. So if you get better to get burned, because I'm going to burn you this morning. Amen. Are we happy? Open the Bible in 1 Samuel 17. This morning, the topic of, of this message will be, take the offensive position. Take the offensive position. And when I'm talking about offensive, not about your words, but the position that you have in the army of God. It's time for us in the world that we are living, that we are moving forward to attack the enemy and not only stay in the def defensive position. But we have to, come, we have to rise up and attack the enemy where he is. You know, our world is changing right now. I don't know if you notice, but the world is changing. Pastor Rain is, is taking a lot of time to show us what is going on in the world and how the government is changing, how the world is changing, how Christianity is taking a toll, how's, how, how our freedom of, of, of speech, our freedom to, to speak out, is, it's, it's, it's threatening. We cannot stay, sit down anymore. We have to rise up. Can someone say rise up? Yeah. We have to awake. We have to rise up. The world is changing. We have to know it. And we have to move forward. We cannot stay the same. We cannot keep doing the same thing all the time. We have to change our ways. And move forward. I refuse for us to, re to worship the way we worship. In three months at the end of the year, we have to worship in another way. We have to pray in another, in another fashion. We have to preach with more fire. And we have to pray with conviction. And this is what I believe. This is what I believe. Don't let me change for myself alone. I'll keep changing. If you don't follow, I'm sorry. I always say to the youth, I'm selfish when it comes to God. I'm very selfish. When it comes to the word of God, I'm selfish. God is, is saying to me, Kirby, preach the word. And I say, okay, I'm doing it. The preachers are doing it. Every pastor right now in Brentford are preaching the word. But your part is to obey the word. Your part is to not only hear, but become doers of the word. And I'm going to put it as Audrey Mack put it. 
become a practitioners of the spirit. I want to be a practitioner of the word. I want to be an always moving, thanking soldier of God in concerning the word. Now, when God will come back and say, Kirby, what, did you preach this word? I will say yes. Well, did you preach this word? I will say yes. Why did you do with all those people in front of you? You say, God, I preached the word like you told me to. Now God will turn back to you. God will turn back to you and say, what have you done with the word? What have you done with the, my message that you have received? What have you done with the revelation that you have received? The answers you were praying for. I'm going to be in heaven already on worshiping. You're going, to, you're, going to, you're going to be in front of God saying, God, I don't know what I've done with that word. Amen? So take the offensive position for this word. I'm going to read the chapter and we're going to preach at the same time. You guys are ready? Amen. Now, verse, seven is verse 1. Now the Philistines gathered their armies together to battle and they were uh, gathered at Sukkot which belongs to Judah, they encamped between Sokot and Azekah in Ephes Damim. And Saul and the men of Israel were gathered together, and they encamped in the valley of Elah, and drew up in the battle array against the Philistines. Verse 4, And a champion went out from the camp of Philistine, named Goliath, from Gad, whose height was six cubits and a span. I'm going to stop here for a second. Uh, we are at war. I'm going to say it again. Today, in our day and age, we are at war. We have to realize it, and we have to get ready for it. We have to prepare for it. You know, the moment you said to yourself, God, come into my life, you said to Jesus, open my, open my house, come into my room, make clean, make the, 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 uh, the, change the, 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 uh, the paint of the wall, change my furniture. The moment you said yes to God, you said yes to the fight. The moment you said yes to Jesus, you said yes to become a soldier of Jesus Christ. Because this is who we are today. We are at war with sin. We are at war with the enemies. And in the world, in the day and age we are living today, we are actually right now at war. You like it or not, maybe you don't like this word or not, but we are. It's time to wake up and smell it. Amen? So we are at war. So, and even in Ephesians 5, if you turn with me in Ephesians 5, verse 6, uh, Ephesians 6, verse 11, he said, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the, the wiles of the devil. Now, the word is saying to us, you are part of the army, and every time you wake up in the morning, you have to put on your armor. You have to take up your sword, take up your shield, take up your cuirass. How do we need? Your, your breastplate. Dress up for the war. Dress up for the fight. Because when you're going to get out from your home, you will encounter sin. You will encounter other gods. You will encounter idols. You will encounter all kinds of stuff. Now, you have to stand against those, those things. And here, God is reminding us in this word that our fight is not against people. Now, in Samuel, it was against people because the time of that war. But the illustration I'm taking in is today, our fight is not against someone. It's against spirits. It's in heavenly places. It's against principalities, demons, sin, 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 and sin again. This is our everyday war. Now, if you put out the army of God, it's because you are a soldier. You cannot put on armor if you're not a soldier. For, do, for we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but against principalities, powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, of this age, and spiritual host, host of the wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Are we today in the evil day? Yes. Thank you for two or three persons who was convinced about that. Yes. Are we today in the evil day? We are. Wake up. It's time. We are today in the evil days. We are the, in the last days of the last days. It's time for us to be awake and know about it. And put on your armor. 
It's time. Amen? But every enemy, you know what? Every enemy has their own champion. Every enemy has one. Now, we are on this side. The enemy is on the other side. And nobody can come to war without a champion, without an ace card in your pocket. That someone has to come with a champion that will represent this war. Now, the enemies of the people of Israel came with Goliath. Goliath was tall and strong, amen? He was tall. He was weighing 400 pounds, half a ton. And he was, he was menacing. He was threatening. He was, he was giving, he was giving um, an energy of death around him. But I want to tell you something today. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 57, he says, But thanks be to God that we have given us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, if you see your enemy today, you have your own champion. We have our own champion, the Alpha and the Omega, the King of Kings, the God of Gods, the one who reigns in the authority today. Right now, this man, who's Jesus Christ, is sitting at the right hand of God with full power in his hand. Now, don't tell me that Goliath is something. He's nothing. Goliath is nothing in front of me because I have Jesus on my side. Now, the moment you have Jesus on your side, you are already victorious. You already have victory. Amen? But Saul didn't realize it then. But we do, we do today. You know, Goliath will always seem powerful. The enemy will never come as a puny enemy. The enemy will never come as a puny, uh, puny demon. He will always come with fire and brimstone. He will always come with experience in his hand. He will always come with power and strength. He, the enemy will never come without power. Now, Goliath has power. He has experience. From his youth, he was at war. So now he has all the energy, all the reason to be frightening. But when, we have your, when, you, have, when you have your champion, which is Jesus Christ, Goliath only seemed to be powerful. He only seemed to be tall. Only seemed to be full of experience. Because your God is always more powerful than the enemy in front of you. Jesus always is. Amen? But they will come with your champion, with their champion. Do not be afraid of this champion. In 1 Samuel 17, verse 8, Goliath, Goliath started to do something. Then he stood and cried out to the armies of Israel and said to them, Why have you come out to, the, to line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine and you the servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourself and let him come down to me. If he is able to fight me and kill me, then we will be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. Verse 11, when Saul and all Israel heard these words of the Philistine, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. I want to tell you something. The enemy is, will always come with tactics to attack you. The enemy will never come without strategies. He thought about it. How I will conquer this land. How I will conquer my brother or my sister. But his first tactics will always be fear. The champion of God will all, the champion of the enemy will always come with fear. It will always come to you and say to you that I am too strong for you. Who are you? You are nothing. I am too strong. I am too tall. Nobody has defeated me yet and nobody will. The enemy will come and invade fear inside of your life. But your job is to dismake that. It's not to let fear speak into your life. Because the moment fear comes in, you're freezing. The moment, the moment fear comes into your life, you gain cold. You don't move anymore. You, so you were supposed to take the offensive position, but now you, you back down. You become cold. And the other tactics that the enemy will always take is you, you, it will not acknowledge your real identity. You know, uh, Goliath said to the people of Israel that they are servants of Saul. 
No, they're not. They are a servant of God. Now, if someone comes to me and says, Kirby, you're a servant of men, there's no way. I'm not servant of men. I will not align my identity to be aligned with a man. I will align my identity with the identity of God. Why? Hold on. Because if I align myself with the identity of Saul, Saul has already been defeated. Fear is already in him. Saul was the king of the people of God. Even though at that time his spirit fled from him. But still he was the king of that people. King of the army of God. But yet again, even the king could not even stand up in front of Goliath. Even the king, now you told me that I'm aligning myself with that king? No. I will align myself with the king. The king. Because that king, Jesus, has never been defeated. Now, my commander-in-chief has a, brand, has a record of infinite victory, zero defeat. Now, if I want to vouch for someone, if I would align myself with someone, I would allow myself with a commander-in-chief, with a sergeant, a colonel, that, will ne- that has never been defeated. So I can assure, guarantee, that if I follow him, I will not fail. Now, don't let the enemy speak into your life and saying that you're a servant of men. You are not a servant of men. You are a servant of God. Now, if, if, you, if I come with you somewhere... And someone comes to you, even if you're with me, even if I'm on fire and I'm a, about to explode right now. But even if you see I'm on fire, never align my, your identity to me. Even if I'm your pastor in front of you, never align yourself, your identity to me. Because the moment I will fail, you will fail too. The moment you the confine in me, you trust, you put a trust in me. The moment I... Don't put my trust in God, you will never follow me again. And you will fail. Now, King Saul has failed because fear has come into his life. He was about to buy someone. If someone can face Goliath for me, <laughs> I will give him my daughters in the uh, majestic prizes. Amen? So, the, de- the devil will always come with two tactics fear. And you will not acknowledge your real identity because the moment he does, he knows he's going to be defeated. The moment he acknowledges that you are a servant of God, soldiers for Christ, he knows, the, he's already knows the, the end result, which is defeat. Do you understand what I'm saying? And if you let the enemy come to you all the time, verse 16, and the Philistine drew near and presented himself 40 days, morning and evening. If you let, if you accept what the champion of the enemy is saying to you, it will always come at you day and night to repeat the same thing again. You are nothing. You fear me. You are a servant of men. You are nothing. You fear me. You are a servant of men. You are nothing. You fear me. You are a servant of men. He came for, for 40 days. Goliath came in front of the people saying, you will never defeat me. You may be my slave. Now, if you let, now the, I can imagine me in the army saying in front of Goliath and 80 times in the midst of 40 days, 80 times evil comes at me and saying me, say to me those words and I'm accepting it. How can I be an overcomer? I cannot accept those words. Amen? So don't let yourself be deceived by the words of the enemy. But in the midst of that story, God already has a plan. You know, we serve a God who is never surprised. Never, nothing shake him. Even when Adam and Eve disobeyed his only commandment, he was not surprised. He was already prepared with a plan. You know, we serve a God that if we put our full trust in him, even though we don't know what's going on, Something is going on. You see what I'm saying? Even if we don't know what God is doing, something is brewing. You know? There's, I don't know if I should say that, but I'll do it anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, I lo- when I was younger, I loved wrestling. Okay, I don't know if I should do this. But anyway, if, if when, I, when I was younger, I loved wrestling. Every Saturday night, 
Saturday afternoon, I was watching uh, uh, wrestling. And the one guy I loved was The Rock. <laughs> and he was, and do we have some The Rock fans here? All right. If, if you, if you, I don't, if you, <laughs> if you know who The Rock is, do you know his anthem? Can, can you say it if you know it? If you, okay, I'm not going to say it. All right. But he was saying, he was saying, if you smell what The Rock is cooking, you know, that this is our God, not, not Dwayne Johnson, but Jesus Christ. You know, if, if you smell what the Spirit is doing, you'll trust him. If you put a trust in the Spirit of God, you'll trust him. Amen? Now, forget about the rock, thinking about God now. Okay? All right? But God is preparing someone. You know what? In the wilderness, in the backyard, behind the scenes, not in part of the army, but behind the scenes, God was preparing someone. And in verse 20, this is the beauty where we discover so David rose, David rose early in the morning, left the sheep with the keeper, and took the things and went as Jesse has commanded him. I just want to pause here for a second. David was, I've been chosen by God in chapter 16. We see Samuel comes and one of the brothers, and he, and he didn't find the king, but God was saying, there's one left that you have to see. And David came, he has been anointed by Samuel and became king that day. But he didn't become, he, he received the anointing, but not a title. You see what I'm saying? He, he received the calling, but he did not receive the position. He received the revelation, but he did not receive the practice. But he was practicing shepherd. Do you, know, do you follow me? Now, God will always orchestrate something for you to begin walking into your calling. God will always open the doors for you, for you to walk in that calling and take the offensive position. Don't, don't rush to that title. If God has already called you, let God open the doors for you. You know, if God has already anointed you, don't rush for a position. Don't rush for a title. Let God push you. Because when God is pushing you, Ah, something would happen. I don't know about you, but God is speaking to me right now. When God is calling you, don't be afraid. Don't, don't ask questions. Keep on serving. Keep doing what you do because God will raise you up. Now, God said, JC wanted to know how his brother fares in the army. Now, JC said to David, David, take those, take those, uh, those food. And how do, go see how your brother fares in battles, right? David didn't know that. But he, he was obedient in his position at the time. Even though he was anointing king, he was serving as a shepherd. Do you hear what I'm saying here? It's very important for the church. When you keep serving, God will raise you up. Even if you're in the backyard, even if you're in the wilderness, you, do, you have those few sheep. You're doing things, people don't know your name. You're doing things, people don't know your identity. Keep serving. Because God will open doors for you. He will create pretexts. He will create opportunities for you to be a part of the fight. For you to be a part of the offensive position. For you to be a part of what God has planned for you. Don't rush into your calling. Let God work for you. So David was obedient to Jesse, and he went there. I'm going to keep reading. And he came to the camp as the army was going out to the fight and shouting for the battle for Israel and the Philistine has drawn up in battle array. And David left his supply in the end of the supply keeper, ran to the army, and came, uh, came and greeted his brother. Before I go, when God is open doors for you to take the offensive position, and evil knows about that. When you prepare yourself to attack him, I'm speaking to some people here. Because now I'm speaking knowing what's going on in this world. Amen? When, when God is preparing you 
to take the offensive position we, which we should all take in this day and age, discouragement will arise. There's some people, I'm speaking to you, there's some people who come at you and say to you, what are you doing here? What are you doing? Do you know you were supposed to stay over there? Didn't you have a job to do in the backyard? When God is bringing you somewhere, wait for those people. They will arise. They will arise. Discouragement will always occur when someone is moving forward with God. There's always going to be those people that will come to you and say, you're not supposed to be here. But the same people who say you're not supposed to be here are the same people who stand in front of Goliath for 40 days doing nothing. You know, the people, that is not, that is, that, that, the people who who's not doing nothing, those are always the people that will speak the, mo the most. Those are always going to be the people that will criticize the most. It's those people who see the problems, speaking, say, standing here, we never do anything, but when someone wants to take charge, they will speak out. Be wait, wait for those people. So when David went to the, to the army to see his brothers, to see, uh, to do whatever God, uh, Jesse has commanded him to do, now his one brother, his older brother, Eliab, verse 28. Now Eliab, oldest brother, his oldest brother, heard when he spoke to the man and Eliab, because David was curious. He came to the army and said, what's going on here? Who is this, that uncircumcised man who come and speak against the people of Israel? David was a proud man. We should have the spirit of David. In Samuel 16, David has been described as a man of valor, man of war, skillful. So David was not anyone. He was young and pretty face, but he has something inside of him. Don't, don't look at the pretty face, people. Don't look at their pretty face. <laughs> All right? Now, Eliab, his oldest son, brother, heard when he spoke to the men, and Eliab's anger was aroused against David, and he said, Why did you come down here? And with whom have you left those few sheep in the wilderness? I know your pride and the insolence of your heart, for you have come down to see the battle. I just want to pause here for a second. I want to remember something from, uh, for you guys. In Samuel 16, when Samuel came to anoint the brothers, to anoint Jesse's son, Eliah was the first to show. Eliah was the oldest one, tall, handsome guy. It was look, he, he had the appearance of a king. It, was, it looked like Saul. And Samuel was ready to pour out the oil on, 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 Jesse, on, on Eliab's head. But Samuel had to learn something. They, God said to Samuel, hey, I want to learn something or two. Don't look at the appearance of the someone. Look at the inward of that person. I didn't choose that man. You're looking at the outward appearance. You're looking at his tallness, his strongness, his beauty, his, 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 his scarred face because he worked so hard. You look at his arm because it's so big, not like mine, but maybe like, you know, someone else. You know? You look at his arm and he's so big. Oh, this man is a king. He said, God, no, I refused him. I rebuked him. I rebuked him. This is not the one I've chosen for. But Samuel was, was what? You don't choose Eliab. Look at him. God, look at him. Look at him. He's so handsome and tall and, and powerful. This seems like a king. But the oil didn't drop. The anointing didn't drop. Amen? But David has been chosen on that day. You know? You know what? Jesse didn't even call. You know, David wasn't even an option in Samuel 16. You remember that? They, you know, when Samuel asked for Jesse's son, Jesse took his seven son. He was proud of them, right? He, 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 was, he was eliminating them. He didn't even call David in the first place. And Samuel thought he was also, no, you have another one. I said, oh, 
It's true, I have another one. Oh, it's true, yes, I have the last one, that bastard. That, that, no, not, not the curse word. Not the curse word. Bastard is a son out of marriage. Okay, just, just for the record. Just for the record. Okay, because I've been filmed and now I've been recorded here. Just for the record. Bastard is just a son who has been born out of wedlock. I didn't sin here. Please, I didn't sin. Okay, forgive me if someone has been offended. So that, that child who has been born from, a, from another woman to be polite. I forgot about him. David, come here. So he came, he was ruddy, pretty face, young. He was dirty from the, the dirt of the sheep. But the anointing fell on him to be chosen as a king. Now David, when he came to the army of God, Eliah was angry at him. And he said, I know your heart. I know your pride. I know the insolence of your heart. You know, Eliab was, was saying this to David, but Eliab didn't know that was the state of his own heart. When someone is speaking against you, they think they know you, but they don't. They think they know your heart, but they do not know your heart. They think they know your calling, but they do not know your calling. Only you know because you have been called in the wilderness. You have been called in the backyard. You have been anointed separately. You see what I'm saying? So Eliab was talking to his own pride. He was talking to his own anger. He was talking to himself, his own insolence, because he has not been chosen for the position. And that's some of us in the kingdom of God. Some of us has not been chosen by God, and then we have this anger inside of us. Because we've seen Pastor Kirby preaching. I should be preaching. I should. Pastor Ray's not here. I should be preaching. I should be the one. I don't know why I'm saying this. Something has to be corrected. If there is Eliabs in the church, you better change yourself. You better change. Because your pride and insolence will not help. But David's showing us something. David's showing us the action of every Christian when you encounter someone, the first discouragement that happened into your calling, you turned away from them. Turned away from them. And David said, what have I done? Is there not a cause? They need to turn from him toward another. When someone comes against you, against your calling, against the, the command that you have received from God, they oh, the doors that God has opened for you, don't listen to the discouragement because they will come. Turn away from them. Give them their back. Because if you, look, if you listen to discouragement, you will not be able to fight like you were supposed to fight. You will never, you will never take, be able to take your offensive position. And you should take the offensive position. But David reacted another way. He turned from him and he went to Saul and said, Then David said to Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. You know, he took upon himself. When you know your calling, you know what you're doing. When you know your calling, you are filled with conviction. You are filled with, with, with boldness and courage to face whatever has to be faced. Now you come, you come to church, you see problems. For 40 days, the enemy has shown himself. And we need that spirit of David in the church sometimes. To come and say, let me take charge of this. Let not the church fail because I know what kind of God I have in my life. We will win today. Don't let your hearts fail. Don't let your kingdom fail. Because I'm taking charge today. And some people didn't like it. And even King Saul sucking discouragement. You know, someone, sometimes when you want to take charge, another discouragement will occur again. Or will occur again. Even King Saul said to David, said, David, you are not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. For you are a youth, and he a man of war from his youth. You have no experience. You cannot do it. 
You can't fight this battle. Some people, again, will come as King Saul. They will look at your appearance and they will look, I I'm not sure. You can't know. It's not possible. But now, David, can, some, this, there's some people that will come in front of you. There's one you have to turn away. But there's another one you have to speak against. There's a difference. There's one discouragement. There's one failure you have to turn away from. Don't even ask time to speak to that person. But there's some people who comes to you with discouragement words that you cannot turn away from. You have to share now your testimony to them. You have to share what God has done in your life. So they can understand that, don't look at me from the outside, but look at me from the inside. Amen. And what is in inside is the victory of God multiple times in my life. Hallelujah. And David has to do this. Now, he could not turn away from a king because the king has to give him blessing to go and fight. Even though, again, even though David was not only king, he wasn't a king. He didn't have the title, so he needed a blessing from King Saul to go and fight. So he, he, couldn't, he could not turn away from that. He had to explain to him, listen, O king, when I was doing what I was doing as a servant of Jesse, when I was a shepherd, God delivered me from the paws of the lion and the paws of bear. And the same God that delivered me from the lion and the bear, he will also deliver me from this man. Now, when you face with that kind of discouragement and you declare that kind of words in front of that king, the king has no choice but to release you. He, can't not, he cannot hold you. Men cannot hold you down when you know what kind of God you have in your life. Men cannot do anything when you have this God inside of your life. He cannot hold you down. He cannot stop you. That's why I'm saying to you guys, do not identify with men. Identify with God. Sometimes you have to share your testimony to men so they can understand what kind of God they have to serve. You have to share it. You have to share your victories sometimes with some people so they can turn the discouragement into a blessing. And you know what? In verse, uh, in verse 37... When David said that, Saul had no choice but to say, go, and the Lord be with you. Now, discouragement turned away to be a blessing. Now, go, go. In verse 40, David took upon action. He went into the offensive position. Then he took his staff in his hand, and he chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook, and he put them in a the shepherd's bag in a pouch which he, he, he had, and the sling was in his hand. And he drew near to the Philistine. I want to say here, use what God has given you on the time of the calling. When God is giving you something, use it. Don't try to take someone else's armor, someone else's sword, someone else's gift. Don't try to copy anyone. Do as you do. God wants to use you as you are. God wants to use you in the level you are today. Don't wait for to be a king to begin trampling down Goliaths. As a shepherd, you can conquer Goliaths. You see what I'm saying? Use what you have. In Exodus, uh, verse four, Exodus 4, verse 2, Moses was in front of the same dilemma. It was in front of God. God called him to go and free my people. But he said, God, how will they believe? Verse 2, God is saying to Moses, what do you have in your hand? What is that in your hand? Moses said, a rod. Then use that rod. Use that rod. What you have in your hand right now is enough for God to push it forward. You know what? David knew. That when he took those five smooth rocks from the brook, when he took his staff, when he took his shepherd's pouch, 
and his pretty face, he knew that this battle cannot be won by his own capacity. He knew that this battle has to be won only by God. So like we said in Ephesians 6, the battle that we fight is not with flesh and blood. It's not with your own power. It's not with your own capacities. You have to have used the spirit of God. You have to be full of God. You have to have God in your back. Because what you have, God will use that to push it forward, to give you a victory. You don't have to know all the Bible to preach. I don't know all my Bible, what I'm saying right now. I don't know my Bible, and now it's in English. I don't know my Bible by heart. But God he's uses the knowledge that I have that he gave me so far to preach the gospel. To preach the word of God. So now I'm proud. With what I have, I can take my offensive position. I remember the, uh, the march for the M103 that we went in Kitchener. I was afraid. Because I said, God, I want to experience things. No, I want to have new victories inside of you. But I don't know if I'm, if I'm cut out for this. I don't know when I'm going to encounter arguments. I'm, I might be able to respond. I'm, I might be able to, to fight. And I was, I was a little bit of afra afraid, but I wanted so much to take charge. I wanted so much to make a difference. I went anyway. And God put words in my mind to defend myself. I didn't came with, and I didn't study the governments by heart. I didn't study the uh, Islam religion by heart. I trust in God. And God gave me power. God gave me words. God gave me knowledge. God gave me what I needed so I can stand my ground in front of the enemy. Amen. That's why David is saying. That's why David is saying. He's saying, to Goliath, he's saying to Goliath, you know, big man, is you big, it's true. You powerful, it's true. You you tall, it's true. And you come to me with spear, javelin, shield, and experience, but I come to you with the power of God. Now, he didn't describe what he has. He didn't say to God, I come with, with you with, with, with rocks. No, no, no. I come with you, towards you, with the power of God. With the power of God. Because David knew that the moment he's going to throw that rock, God will took control. God will take control and that will pierce that head. And you know what? David was so, was so insulting to Goliath. Goliath had no choice now but to rush to him, to kill him, to try and kill him. But remember, David took the offensive position. When you are in front of the enemy, you cannot back down. You cannot run. You cannot flee. You have to face it head on. You have to face it head on. You have to. And David's showing us something here. When Goliath started to draw near to David, the word says that David hurried toward him. He hurried toward him. He didn't run. He ran, he ran faster than Goliath to kill him because he didn't know that he already has victory in advance. I want to I wanna, I wanna speak to some people to, this morning. Now, we do not live in Samuel's time and age. We live in 2017 today. And our fight is not with actual armies. It's in the spiritual realm. Now, Goliath is not a man nine feet tall. Goliath is sin in our lives. Goliath is persecution and tribulations. Now, if there is someone... This morning, that doesn't know about Jesus, that doesn't know about this commander-in-chief, that, that live in front of that Goliath. You have this Goliath in front of you, and you do not know what to do. You don't, you don't have this assurance of winning a victory. You need Jesus today. You need Jesus today. Jesus can be your champion. You know what Jesus did? He came down. He died on a cross just for you. So you can have everlasting victory in Jesus' name. 
Now, if you live in sin, today is your day to conquer that sin. If you have tribulation in your life, today is your day to have victory over that tribulation. If you, if you won that victory, if you have a Goliath in front of you, today is your day to receive that Jesus into your life. The worship team can come back. And I and, 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 and know in my life, if Jesus was not there, I would have been defeated so many times. And you know what? People always say, Kirby, you're on fire. Mm -mm. Jesus is on fire in me. Because if, if I, I, was, I didn't have this Jesus in my life, I would have never been on fire. I would have been on fire for many things else than preaching, than the word of God. So we want to pray for you. If you do not know about Jesus, if you do not know God, if you do not know Jesus, today is the day to receive it. Today is the day to accept him inside of your life. I'm speaking to you right now. You know, there's no, there's no victory. There's no true victory without Jesus. There is none. And I'm saying it with boldness. There is none. There is no true victory without Jesus into your life. Is the only one that can change all kinds of situation inside of your life. We have experienced Jesus last Sunday through healing and power of the Holy Spirit. He can come and at you again today. Amen? Is there someone this morning with a show of hands that do not have Jesus in his life or in her life? We want to pray for you. We want to give you that Jesus, that victory. He came down to die for you. To save you from sin. To save you from death. He, got, he, was, he was burned for three days and then he arose with victory. He can give you the same victory this morning. If you want change in your life, transformation in your life right now is the timing you know I always say this there is no coincidence in the spirit realm there is no coincidence in the kingdom of God if you're here it's for a reason it's for if, you, if you're here it's because you were supposed to be here Jesus is knocking at your door right now Revelation 3.20, say that to us. I am knocking at the door. If someone hears my voice and let me in, I will eat with him, dine with him, supper with him, sleep, awake. He will live with you. Is there someone with a show of hands? that wants to know that Jesus this morning don't be afraid Jesus is here to touch you amen give God some praise there's one person if you want to have this Jesus we want to pray for you I would ask the deacons to come forward to help us in prayer. And I would like to have my sister come in front. I want to pray for you. Amen. Let's give you guys some praise. Let's give you guys some praise. Come on. You know, when, when there's one soul, come on. When there's one soul that comes to Jesus, there's a party in heaven. Amen? There's a party in heaven. Is there, is there someone else? Is there someone else that, will, that wants to come in to the Lord? We can pray for you. What is your name? 
and you want to accept Jesus Christ this morning. Amen. Victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. All right, the deacons, uh, Brother Sammy, deacons, we're going to pray for you, and we're not going to give you Christ. The fact that you came here this morning, and the fact that you're here right now at the altar weeping, God is already in. He's already in. You know? And He will save you. He will forgive you. Only He wants you to do to repent from your sin. Repent from your sin and acknowledge Christ as a personal Savior. Do you want to do that this morning? Yes, I do. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, the brothers here, they will pray for you. Amen. You want to lead the prayer? Father, you are so good. You are so faithful, oh God. And we thank you for this dear sister. We pray, Lord, for Marilyn, that you would just bless her. Lord, that you'd seal the work that you are doing in her right now. We pray now by your spirit that you would just fill her, that you would minister to her. Lord, and we just plead the blood of Jesus over her right now for the forgiveness of her sins. Lord, that you are uh, doing away with the old and that you have made her now into a new creation with you. So Lord, we just pray that you would just anoint her. Thank you, Lord, for the destiny that you have in store for her, oh God, for where you are leading and guiding her, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you would use her to be a light within this city, oh God. Lord, I pray that you would just reveal yourself to her in new and fresh ways this week, Lord. Lord, I pray that you place people around her to build her up and to minister to her, oh God. And I thank you, Lord, that she is here today. Lord, if she's the only one that got ministered today, that's all that matters. But Lord, I believe that there is even more here that got touched. And I thank you, Lord, for what you're doing within this church, oh God. And I pray, Lord, that you would just move mightily for your glory in Jesus' name. Yes, in praise Jesus God. Name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. You know, we don't want to be barren, right? That's, that's the cry I always cry out to God. I say, God, I don't want to be barren. I want to bear children. Amen? We want to see people saved. We want to see people healed. We want to see people taking their position. Now, if you can stand up, we're just going to sing about love came down, about the love of God. And if you need prayer this morning, we're going to stand with you. And if you're not in the offensive uh, position, you've uh, somehow you went astray and... You know, you're no longer in your position, but this morning you're being triggered by the Holy Spirit to say, God, I will not leave this place until I'm in position with God. Amen? So God has given us holy boldness. So we don't mind praying for you. Just come up if you need prayer, need healing, or whatever it is. We're going to agree with God, and you're going to leave victorious. Thank you, Lord.
going to read uh, two, three scriptures about the blessing before we go. So when you go, you don't leave empty, but we've received a lot this morning. Amen. And, so, and in Romans 11:33, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how insecurable his ways. Far from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever and ever. May the God of endurance and encouragement great, grant you to live in such harmony with one another. Amen. In one another, in one accord with Jesus Christ, that together we may be with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. One voice, one heart. Amen. Go with the blessing of the Lord today and just meditate on what you've heard today and come back tonight, bring more people. Amen. We want to see this church packed and filled up. We want to knock down walls in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.